Hi everyone, in my previous video I already explained about the what is meant by an epilepsy. Now I would like to explain about very important topic in second B from second semester about an anticonvulsants and its classification, mechanism of action and synthesis of some of the important terms. First we will recount the classification of anticonvulsants. Based on the chemical structure these are majorly classified into seven types. And the first class is barbiturates. This is we are already discussed in case of in sedatives and hypnotics. The example of drugs are phenobarbitol and mephobarbitol. And second class of drugs are hydantoins. The examples are phenytoin, mephenytoin and ethotoin. And the third class of drugs are oxazolidin dione derivatives. Two examples are the trimethadone and paramethadione. And next fourth and fourth class is succinamides. Two the three examples fensuximide, methsuximide, ethosuximide. And fifth class of drugs are benzodiazepines. This is also discussed in hypnotics and sedatives. The example of drug is clonazepam. And next and sixth one is urea and monoacyl urea derivatives. The two examples phenacetamide and carbamazepine. It comes under the category of eminostilbene drink. And fourth uh, and last and final class is miscellaneous compounds. The examples are primidone and valproic acid, gabapentin and felbamate. Coming to the first class of compound barbiturates. So in the barbiturates, generally it consisting of basic structure as an pyrimidine, six member ring which possesses an two nitrogen separated by an one carbon atom. From this pyrimidine, it possesses an ketones, three ketones. This is the basic structure of barbituric acid. This is the basic structure of barbituric acid. Here it possesses two hydrogen atoms. Coming to the numbering of this compound. For this heteroatom, uh, for this nitrogen, we start giving the number 1 followed by 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So generally the substitutions of this barbituric acid is occurred at this hydrogen atoms in case which is located at fifth position. And coming to the examples of uh, drugs under barbiturates, the example is phenobarbitone, another one is an mephobarbitone. So the name of the compound itself indicates that it consisting of an pheno, nothing but a phenyl ring is present at a fifth position. One is an alkyl. Always these two hydrogen atoms are substituted by alkyl or allyl groups. So generally one hydrogen must be always with an ethyl, another hydrogen must be varies depending upon the name of the compound. In case of phenobarbitol, at the fifth position, one must be an ethyl, another one is a phenyl. That's why we can name this one as a phenobarbitol. And coming to the IUPAC name of this molecule, so all this compound is nothing but an barbituric acid. For this barbituric acid, at the fifth position, we are substituted with an ethyl, another one is a phenyl. So there two substitutions are there. While writing the name for this IUPAC name for this molecule, we have to follow an alphabetical order. At the fifth position, first it possesses an ethyl followed by an phenyl. We can name this one as an 5-ethyl, 5-phenyl barbituric acid. This is the IUPAC name for an phenobarbitol. And coming to the next one is an mephobarbitol, which possess similar structure like an phenobarbitol, but along with this one, phenyl and ethyl, it also possess an methyl. Mepho is nothing but it possesses a methyl group at the first position or first nitrogen atom possesses a methyl so such molecule we can name it as a mephobarbitol both are comes under the category of barbiturates and coming to the second class of compounds are hydantoins in case of hydantoins hydantoin is chemically nothing but an 2 comma 4 imidazolidine dione derivative so it is a 5 member ring it possesses an imidazole so E50 possess this is the structure of imidazolin. For this imidazolin, it possess two ketones and these nitrogens are satisfied with the hydrogens. And coming to the given the number in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here also possess and two hydrogens. So this is compound we can name it as an 2 comma 4 imidazolin dione. So 2 comma 4 at the second and fourth position it consisting of two ketones. We can name this one as 2 comma 4 imidazolin dione. This is commonly known as an hydantoin. 
in derivatives of hydrant oils depending upon the name similar to barbitch rates it also substitute with different functional group at the fifth position in case of phenobarbitone again same thing so phenyl is substituted at the fifth position it consisting of two phenyl rings so generally the phenytoin is well known in name it as an diphenyl hydantoin which is commonly name it as an diphenyl hydantoin and this is the structure of an phenytoin at the fifth position both the hydrogens are substituted with phenyl rings it is known as 5 comma 5 diphenyl hydantoin or instead of hydantoin while writing the chemical name we have to write the name of the hydantoin nothing but 2 comma 4 imidazole dione or 5 comma 5 diphenyl 2 comma 4 imidazole dione so the most important point here is phenytoin is the drug of choice in the treatment of grand mal epilepsy and coming to the second class of example of drug here is mephenytoin so same difference so instead of an uh, uh, along with this functional group it also possesses a methyl at the first nitrogen atom itself at the third position it possesses a methyl functional group and the difference is at the uh, fifth position it possesses an ethyl and phenyl along with the first position it possesses a methyl so what is the chemical name of this molecule is 3 methyl 5 ethyl and 5 phenyl and remaining structure is nothing but an hydantoin and third class of compounds are oxazolidine dione derivatives in oxazolidine dione derivatives generally the oxazole we can name it as oxazole it consists it's a five member ring it possesses oxygen as well as a nitrogen this is the structure of an oxazole oxazolidine is nothing but an it does not possess an double bonds we can name it as an oxazolidine dione it possess two ketones so this is the numbering from the oxygen itself it is more electronegative it can we can start giving the number 1 2 3 4 and 5 at the second and fourth position it possess an ketones so this is the basic structure of oxazolidine dione derivatives generally we have to go for substitutions similar like uh, previous one barbiturates and hydantoins we can go for substitution at fifth position the first example of drug is trimethadione in the trimethadione the name itself indicate it consisting of trimetha means it possesses an three methyl groups at the fifth position two metha and the one is third nitrogen it possesses an one more methyl functional group this is the structure of trimethadone uh, what is the chemical name is it possesses three methyl one is at third and two at and fifth position we can name it as 3 comma 5 comma 5 trimethyl oxazolidine 2 comma 4 dione this is the chemical name of trimethadone and next one is an paramethadione similar structure but the difference is one of the methyl which is located at the fifth position is replaced with an ethyl it gives an paramethadione and what is the chemical name for this molecule is 3 comma 5 dimethyl 5 ethyl oxazolidine 2 comma 4 dione this is the chemical name of this molecule This is the, both are the comes under the category of oxazolidine dione derivatives. And the next one is in succinamides. There are three examples are there. Succinamides is the cyclic derivative of an succinic acid with in a amide form. We can name it as a succinamide. The examples are fen-succinamide, met-succinamide, ethosuccinamide. Fen-succinamide it possesses a phenyl ring. In case of succinamide, along with the methyl, methyl is most commonly substituted here. And met-succinamide along with the phen. Phenyl it also possesses methyl. We can name it as an methsuccinamide. Ethosuccinamide it possesses an ethyl functional group. We can name it as ethosuccinamide. We have already discussed that phenobarbital or hydantoin, phenytoin is the drug of choice in grand mal epilepsy, whereas ethosuccinamide is the drug of choice in an petit mal epilepsy. That is, both all three are the comes under the category of succinamides. And the fifth class of drugs is nothing but benzodiazepines. The example of drug is an clonazepam. This is the structure of an clonazepam. It consisting of benzene and diazepine ring. At the fifth position, this is the numbering of diazepine ring. At the fifth position, it consisting of an chlorobenzene. At the seventh position, it consisting of an nitro group. And this is the structure of an clonazepam. and the sixth class of compounds are urea and monoacyl ureas the well and important example is an carbamazepine so the carbamazepine which possesses an imino stilbene ring this is the basic ring we can name it as an imino stilbene so if for this imino stilbene it consisting of carbamide we can name it as an carbamazepine what is the chemical name of this molecule is 5 carbamide 5h 
dibenzoazepine is nothing but a seven membered ring with nitrogen so this is the chemical name for a carbamazepine and coming to the last and final class of anti convulsants is nothing but a miscellaneous compounds the example is nothing but a primidone and gabapentin valproic acid and felbamate all these four are comes in the category of miscellaneous compounds and next one important uh, parameter in gay anti convulsants make how the anti convulsant shows its mechanism of action the major parameter here is nothing but we can know about an epilepsy so what is meant by epilepsy it is nothing but excess firing of neurons excess firing of neurons is nothing but an epilepsy so what is our target is we have to reduce the firing of your neurons just we have to inhibit or decrease the firing of neurons to get an anti convulsant action so there are several seven classes of drugs we are studied here so each and every class shows its individual mechanism of action and the first class of drugs are barbiturates and benzodiazepines the barbiturates and benzodiazepines generally they act on gaba receptors or gaba mediated chloride channels so generally the gaba is a type of an ligand gated ion channel it consisting of an pentameric subunit it consisting of an five subunits so like this it consisting of two binding sites one is nothing but an picrotoxin binding site and the one is an benzodiazepine binding site Whereas in case of an picrotoxin binding site generally for this binding site the barbiturates will bind so for this one the benzodiazepines will bind so whenever the barbiturates or benzodiazepines we are taken so the barbiturates bind to the picrotoxin site whereas benzodiazepines bind to the benzodiazepine site finally they can it is a flower like structure they can open the uh, ion channel and finally there is a influx of an chloride ions if there is a influx of chloride ions which ultimately leads to an uh, hyperpolarization if the hyperpolarization will occur which will prevents the cell firing or inhibit the firing of your neurons this is the major mechanism of action of barbiturates and benzodiazepines what they will do the barbiturates and benzodiazepines they are majorly acting on an gaba a receptor gaba a receptor is a type of ligand gated ion channel in this ligand gated ion channel it is a pentameric in structure it consisting of an two binding site one is picrotoxin binding site and there one is benzodiazepine binding site for the picrotoxin binding site the barbiturates will bind to this binding site and open the channel and there is influx of chloride ions which ultimately leads to hyperpolarization and prevents the firing of neurons similar way the benzodiazepines also do the same action but bind with their benzodiazepine binding site which is located in a gaba a receptors there is a mechanism of action of barbiturates and benzodiazepines and next one is mechanism of action of hydantoins and carbamazepines they majorly blockade the voltage dependent sodium channels so how we can reduce the firing of neurons is either we can increase the influx of negative ions or we can decrease the uh, efflux or influx of your positive ions in case of barbiturates and benzodiazepines we can decrease the influx uh, increase the influx of your chloride ions whereas hydantoins and carbamazepines they can block the influx of your sodium ions and finally they can prevent the spread of your seizures and they inhibit uh, inhibited and show the anti convulsant effect and next one is at succinamides and the succinamide shows its action by blockade of calcium channels in the thalamic neurons and control the absence issues so there are three mechanisms are there for anti convulsants first one is increase uh, increase the influx of your chloride ions or decrease the sodium ions or decrease the calcium ions either we can increase the influx of negative ions or decrease the influx of your positive ions and finally it produces an anti convulsant effect this is the brief about an mechanism of action of anti convulsants coming to the last and final topic in this uh, uh, anti convulsants is synthesis of some of the important drugs and first go to the synthesis of an important drug phenytoin we are already know that the phenytoin we can name it as an diphenyl hydantoin how we are synthesizing the starting material for the synthesis of phenytoin is generally used in benzoin so the benzoin this is the structure of benzoin it consisting of an alcohol group which undergoes an oxidation 
in the presence of an oxidizing agent like concentrated nitric acid it gives a molecule of a benzene what is meant by oxidation nothing but removal of two hydrogen atoms and convert into an ketone is uh, is nothing but an oxidation the benzene is undergoes oxidation and gives a molecule of an keto derivative nothing but a benzene the benzene undergoes some cyclization in presence of an urea and finally it gives a molecule nothing but a phenytoin we can name it as a diphenyl hydantoin this is the synthesis of an phenytoin and next coming to the synthesis next is important synthesis is synthesis of carbamazepine it is an amino stilben nucleus and the starting material for this one is nothing but a 2 nitro benzyl chloride two molecules of 2 nitro benzyl chloride undergoes some cyclization in presence of sodium hydroxide it gives this molecule this is the two molecules here with the loss of two chlorine atoms it gives a double bond here and this is the one of the intermediate we are getting nitro derivative and this nitro derivative we have to subject it for reduction in the presence of an reducing agents it gives an amine derivatives so finally we have to first go for an uh, removal of this double bond the double bond we can remove by the addition of hydrogens we can name it as an hydrogenation for removal of an one double bond we can add an two hydrogens that process we can name it as hydrogenation by the hydrogenation we can remove this double bond and finally we have to go for the cyclization here how we can go for cyclization here simply by heating by providing higher temperature we can remove an one of the uh, nh to and h we can lost in the form of an ammonia the ammonia is lost by the heating and finally this molecule undergoes cyclization and it gives an molecule name it as an amino stilbene and then the amino stilbene ring further undergoes an bromination it forms an bromine derivative here and it finally upon bromination followed by upon bromination followed by dehydrohalogenation or dehydrobromination there is a loss of h and br here it also gives a double bond here so this molecule finally treated with an phosphine cocl2 and ammonia and it gives an amide at this position or substitute the hydrogen is replaced by co and h2 to give an carbamazepine this is about the synthetic steps which are involved in the carbamazepine uh, molecule thank you